1954, Ishiro Honda released one of the most famous of monster films ever, called Godzilla. This movie would make its way over to the United States two years later in 1956, with additional editing and new scenes added in under a new title, Godzilla King of the Monsters. This is the movie that I think a lot of us in the West grew up with, and the one that features those famous moments with Raymond Burr, who would later return in the United States cut of The Return of Godzilla in 1985. But in between all of those long years, the Godzilla franchise would grow increasingly silly, over the top, and nonsensical. And it got so ridiculous that the series really didn't resemble itself at all when everything was said and done. But if you go back through the monster's backlog, you'll find out that this wasn't always the case. Godzilla Raids Again, also known as Godzilla's Counterattack, is a 1955 sequel, the very first sequel that is, to the Ishiro Honda original. This movie was directed by Matayoshi Oda and featured a continuation of the story set up in the first movie, as well as a more serious tone that keeps much of the animalistic force and power of Godzilla into the story, before everything kinda got screwed up later on, which guys, I know there's a lot of Showa fans out there, but hear me out with this one. For those of you who don't know, Godzilla was killed at the end of the 1954 original after a brilliant scientist named Dr. Sarazawa sacrificed himself by detonating a device he'd created called the Oxygen Destroyer. Godzilla is usually thought of as some kind of indestructible monster that can't really be touched by anything, but he died. Humans killed him. They wiped him out. He's dead. All that was left was his bones after the first movie. The Oxygen Destroyer truly did devastate that monster. This groundbreaking technology would only be used by Dr. Sarazawa though, under the condition that it would never be used again, because he knew humanity would eventually want to weaponize it, much like they actually do in the first Godzilla movie, and that's why all of his work died with him. It's a similar sort of metaphor to the nuclear bomb itself, if you really start to think about it. Well, in Godzilla 2, we learn that another Godzilla has come up from the depths, this time locked in mortal combat with a giant prehistoric dinosaur from the Ankylosaur family named Ang. Gyrus. And these two savage enemies are tearing their way through Japan in what is, in my personal opinion, one of the better movies in the Showa series. <laughs> Unfortunately, the film would only see release in America under the title Gigantus the Fire Monster, they really called Godzilla that, when Warner Brothers put out an English dub of the film in 1959. But that cut of the movie is kind of whack in comparison to the original product, and we're not going to talk about that. As far as what you can expect goes down in this film, well, we follow a small group of Japanese fishermen who scope out the country's waters for their company to find good schools to fish. The pilots, Shoichi and Koji Kobayashi, end up discovering the monster's Godzilla and Anguirus locked in combat, and when they make their way to the mainland, the paleontologists, scientists, and defense forces all try to stop the monsters by playing into the fact that they are living animals, and even attempt to distract them with giant flares, which, I gotta say, is pretty cool. This is a Godzilla movie that doesn't treat these creatures like they're indestructible monsters. They still are monsters, but they're monsters from radiation. They're monsters from nuclear activity. They're actually dinosaurian animals, and they treat treat them like animals in a similar way that I know people are going to complain, but the 1998 Roland Emmerich film kind of knew what to do with that too. And we've also seen other Godzilla movies, specifically one of my favorites, The Return of Godzilla, play into the whole animalistic nature of these creatures as well. I love that. I think that's great. And I wish Godzilla had stuck with that in the 60s and 70s, but that's not what happened. By the way, the story here is honestly much more human and relatable when compared to much of what came after it as well. And you can really get a sense of camaraderie camaraderie, and civic duty to your fellow man when watching Godzilla Raids again. Of course, it's nowhere near as good as the original, but its quality is constantly derided and ironically made fun of because it's not the over-the-top cheesy bullshit that this franchise eventually fell into, which I think is one both really funny, but also one of the reasons newer Godzilla fans have a much harder time trying to get into the series. I think when people go back to Godzilla 2 and discover that it's actually more closely related to a typical black and white monster film of the 1950s, they get upset. And look, I own a lot of books on Godzilla, magazines on the creature, I really like the monster, I've collected, I own all the movies except for Shin Godzilla. That one's actually kind of hard for me to find, but this is just a monster that I really, really do like. I've loved it my whole life. 
but Godzilla Raids again, it's just not treated very fairly. Now, of course, there are other more serious criticisms besides it not being over the top. I don't agree with those, like, but you can criticize this movie on a lot of different levels, such as the speeding up of the footage which is used for Godzilla and Anguirus's fight scenes. But while this undeniably makes the fights look goofy, it's not like they look tremendously better when you accept the reality of them always looking like giant rubber dinosaur outfits in the first place. Great cinema was happening from Ray Harryhausen in the West at the time, which I also really like, and I mean, no matter what, when you use suits and it's not for a suit-sized person, like in Creature from the Black Lagoon, it's gonna look a little off. I will say that there's also a lot of human plot points and elements that kind of come out of nowhere and fall apart when put up against decent scrutiny as well. But as far as monster movies go, this is a film that I actually think not only needs revisited for people that have known Godzilla forever, but one that newer fans of, say, something like the Monsterverse, the 1998 remake, Shin Godzilla, or even the Millennium series needs to check out as soon as possible. Again, the big difference between a movie like this and much of what came after it is the fact that this Godzilla movie takes itself seriously, much more seriously than any one of those Jun Fukuda movies like Versus Gigan, Megalon, Mechagodzilla, or Ibira ever did. It's also far darker and retains much of the identity of the 1954 original as far as the monster goes. This Godzilla is not only a force of nature, but a wild animal that's trying to fight and kill Anguirus, and that creature is doing the same. Instead of throwing silly punches and kicks, they bite each other, they wrestle to the ground, and when blows connect, it's deathly serious, which you're gonna learn for yourself when you see how it all ends. Also, the death of one of the main human characters is a genuinely patriotic and meaningful one that I think resonates quite well, in all honesty. I remember the first time I ever saw this movie and yelling at my TV going, no, not him, he can't die. <laughs> and uh, I was doing it with a big smile because I loved old school monster movies and this one was really fun, but you get the point. This isn't your typical Showa era Godzilla nonsense and I really think it deserves more credit for that. When it came out in Japan, some people thought it was actually a bit better than the first, but of course things have obviously changed. I personally don't think that at all. It's nowhere near as good as the original, but it is in my top 10 Godzilla movies alongside things like GMK, The Return of Godzilla, and some others. Some people have noted that while the first film may have been a metaphor for the Hiroshima bomb, this one may be seen as one for Nagasaki, and I'm not so sure I buy into that, but I really do like this movie. Godzilla Raids Again tells the human story of a group of Japanese fishermen trying to do their job and court beautiful women to marry at the workplace in a wholesome tale set after the tragic destruction of the first movie. The people feel real, the drama in the offices are sweet, and these men and women genuinely care about each other. When Godzilla and Geras show up to fight, Things go crazy, the duty to protect the country arrives, and these mutant animals must be stopped no matter the cost. That's why I really like the second Godzilla movie, and why I don't think it deserves to be recognized as one of the very best. It's definitely better than it's given credit for. Holy shit, man, you got people out here saying Godzilla's Revenge is like one of the best movies. Even Ashiro Honda really liked that when he's wrong. But hey, those are all just my own thoughts about the movie. What do you guys think? Have you seen this film? And if so, what do you think about it? I know my opinions on Godzilla. Godzilla differ from a lot of mainstream people in the fan base, but I personally am not someone that bends over backwards for a lot of the goofiness in the Showa era from the 60s and 70s. That doesn't mean I'm not a fan of those films, but for me, when it comes to Godzilla, I think the best versions of the monster are the ones that treat him like more than just a giant indestructible beast that protects Japan from robots and aliens. I think he works best as a giant prehistoric animal that scientists struggle to destroy and sometimes even do successfully kill. But Hey, that's just me. Whatever your own thoughts are on Godzilla and Godzilla Raids Again happen to be, I'd love to hear all of them in the comments down below.